Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dharma, Hare Dharma, Rama Dharma, Hare Hare. We can look at sannyas in two aspects. One is that it's a function of the Vedic Varnashram system according to the Vedic social system, which is the, so the social system meant for civilized human life. Uh, in the beginning, there's brahmachari life uh, for education, for training in character, for development of spiritual, the spiritual foundation of life. The brahmachari training is there. And then after brahmachari life, the, with the permission of the spiritual master, the student may marry and enter the grahastashram and accept the duties of family life and we can say the burdens of family life. Responsibilities. After, say, 25 years of grahastha hmm, life, the next stage is retired life, uh, vanaprastha, for developing detachment for home, family, children, material affairs. And then the fourth stage is sannyas, or complete uh, detachment from material life. The, and, the, the, and then the last stage is leaving this world and going back to Godhead. And the purpose is antenarayana smriti. At the end of life, one should be Krishna conscious, remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and make a success of the human life by going back to Godhead. The not every brahmachari marries. Some brahmacharis may remain brahmachari for their whole life, career brahmacharis. Uh, or they may accept directly the renounced order, sannyas. For the grahastas, the vanaprastashram is the intermediate stage for loosening the attachments that develop during family life. But if one hasn't entered family life, then there's nothing to detach oneself from. One can directly accept sannyas. So this is the, of course, outward program, uh, a social system, various ashrams through which we go. Uh, but the inner meaning or purpose of sannyas is to mm, dedicate oneself completely to the devotional service of Krishna. That's the real essence of sannyas. Of course, the Mayavad sannyas, which we never accept, aims at oneness with God. But our goal is oneness by serving God, to be one in purpose with Krishna. In the verse Etasa Astaya uh, chanted by the um, um, Brahmin when he accepted, Avantipur Brahmin when he accepted, uh, you know, gave up the material world. Uh, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains that the purpose, the real meaning of sannyas is to devote oneself 
uh, body, mind, and words, everything, for the service of Mukunda, Krishna. The otherwise sannyas is superficial. Uh, just Prabhupada said the change of cloth is not actually sannyas, but the dedication to the lotus feet of Mukunda is. So this is our our real purpose, or in every ashram, why sannyas only? Uh, anashrita karma palam karyam karma karotiya sa sannyasi. Uh, from that point of view, everyone is meant for sannyas in every ashram. Uh, anashrita karma palam, not to be attached to material things. But karyam karma karotuya, to perform our prescribed duties for the satisfaction of Krishna. That's sannyas. The, among the sannyasis, there are also two ways. There are the bhajananandis, who are mainly interested in their own spiritual advancement, and the Gosyanandis, who are especially concerned with the welfare of others. Uh, they're naturally interested in their own spiritual advancement, but especially uh, their concern is to help others to become Krishna conscious. Srila Prabhupada exemplified the path of the Gosyanandis. Uh, he, when, after Srila Prabhupada had his heart attack in uh, the early 19, in, in the 1960s and went to India and then came back to America in 1968, one of my godbrothers uh, Madhusudan Prabhu said to Srila Prabhupada, or wrote to Srila Prabhupada, that Swamiji, now, Jai Bibi Govind, no, Vidyamana Maharaj, Jai. Half blind. So Madhusudan Prabhu wrote to Srila Prabhupada that Swamiji, now your health is not so good. So it will be better for you to rest for some time and not be involved in public programs and not preach. Prabhupada wrote back and said, my dear boy, uh, if I did not preach, where would you be? So we're all indebted on account of Srila Prabhupada's preaching and on account of the preaching of his followers, where we have the good fortune to be engaged in the Krishna consciousness movement. And so our purpose, our um, duty is to help others become Krishna conscious. And the sannyas ashram is especially meant for that, to give some um, leadership, to give some uh, full dedication. Householders have multi-duties. They have duties for family, 
maintenance, they have duties for preaching. But a sannyasi has no other business uh, to be uh, simply to cultivate Krishna consciousness, spread Krishna consciousness, spread Krishna consciousness. So this is our our purpose. Uh, this is our uh, good fortune. This was Srila Prabhupada's example and and Srila Prabhupada's desire. And so we're trying to serve him in this way. Uh, all of us, and especially the sannyasis, have some particular um, duties. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari. One more thing is that Srila Prabhupada, there's a, an ecstatic picture that appears in one of the versions of the Unchanting booklet. It was taken outside 61 Second Avenue in New York devotees are jumping up and down and they're in the street you can see this sort of uh, funky New York street and devotees are chanting and dancing around Srila Prabhupada and the there's no, no uh, caption but I was there and Srila Prabhupada had, was just coming from an initiation he'd performed at the temple he was going back to his apartment and everybody's jumping and dancing, and Prabhupada was grave. And he only said, we have expanded the parampara from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is our duty to expand the parampara, to expand the sannyasa ashram also, and for the sannyasis to expand uh, and encourage everyone else to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Hare Krishna. So this is a, a very special occasion. When I came in the uh, valley I felt the atmosphere, it was completely electric and very emotional also. So, um, you know, our movement actually is um, a sannyas movement. You know, in Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada explains how, in one purport in the 18th chapter, how his early disciples were actually going out to work and they were surrendering their results to Sri Prabhupada, everything. And he says, this is actually sannyas. And as the first that Maharaj quoted, Jayadvita Maharaj, is that uh, anashrita kama phalam karyam karma karotiya, and that one who works is, as he is obliged, is in the renounced order of life, not one who performs no duty, no lights, no fires. So traditionally that would mean that a sannyas, he would, wouldn't cook, he would just live off the things naturally. Um, but, you know, in modern terms we see that uh, sannyas is not, not for, for renunciation on, but for act, act preaching. And uh, this is a preaching movement, anybody who takes part in it, they're actually on the platform of sannyas if they're following Prabhupada's instructions. And a few days ago, I was speaking to Kripa Moyer in uh, Warrington, and um, he was saying, you know, we can say that, you know, there's no difference, we're all on the same, we're all following the same process. He says, but if we see like that, then things will go wrong. He says, there is a difference. It's a personal difference that, you know, of internal renunciation that, um, 
one dedicates his life to completely serving the Supreme Personality of God with body, body, mind and words. Uh, so we have to make that differentiation. And this is why, um, you know, sannyasi is seen in uh, such a position. When Srila Prabhupada went to um, India with his disciples in the early days, everybody was bowing down and, you know, the disciples hadn't experienced that before. And Prabhupada said, um, you do you know why they're bowing down to me? And the disciples couldn't answer, said, because I've given up sex life. <laughs> but actually, uh, in that respect, you know, if you follow this process, then everybody is a sannyasi. Everything's regulated. So it's a chinchya beda beda tattva. Simultaneously, everybody is engaged in the sannyas mentality, but there is a specific difference between the ashram still. Um, <clears throat> so this is a particular um, situation where uh, Sutta Prabhu is uh, taking sannyas and um, I remember in 2002, I think it was, I think that's when you first joined the ashram, that straight away he was in that mood of actually giving consciousness. Usually when devotees move into the ashram, they're, you know, they usually do work around the ashram and then eventually find the inspiration to go out and preach. Uh, but at that time, uh, he, he was actually wanting to go and preach immediately. So this is very special. And he's been doing that ever since for the last 20 years. He's been giving Krishna consciousness in so many ways, preaching directly, um, writing books, and um, generally inspiring the formation of an ashram. Um, so based on that qualification, um, now he's taking the order of sannyas. So I wish him all the best and uh, I'm sure that it won't affect his consciousness. He's always been very steady, even in, in such a prominent position where everybody really adores him and uh, feels the benefit of his, his association. So I'm sure it won't affect his consciousness one bit. He'll still carry on being the same, uh, same devotee. So I'd like to thank everybody for listening and uh, I'd like to pass over to Indra Jumna Swami. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. My most uh, respectable obeisances to this august assembly of uh, Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. I'm very honored to be here uh, at the auspicious uh, sannyas initiation of uh, Sutapa Prabhu. I've actually never met him. <laughs> Not sure how I got invited. <laughs> but um, I went online the other day. One time I heard Prabhupada say in Paris, you can understand the quality of a Vaishnava by their speaking because through their speaking, we hear their realizations. So I went online and I found uh, Sutapa Das, and I had like 10 minutes before I had to do something. I sat down and started listening to the lecture. I stayed the whole 90 minutes. <laughs> and I got very quickly addicted. <laughs> For the next week, it was just, you know, this lecture, that lecture, this theme, that theme of Sutapa Das. So I just became very attached to him, and I'm very glad that I'm here and I could be part of this auspicious ceremony. Um, I'm with many of my illustrious uh, God brothers and God sisters. My special regards to all of you. And I'm with my bosom buddy. Kadamba Kanan Maharaj, we're actually like twins, I mean, <laughs> we really are, we, we just love doing the same things together for deep in the heart, and I'm with um, my favorite speaker in the whole universe, 
Jai Patel Kamaras. And also, I've, I've never really associated with Maharaj here, but I think I'm going to get addicted, too. I like your talk, man. <laughs> Jai Dwayne Maharaj, um, he speaks from the heart. I'm a scripted devotee. I always have a few notes, especially I struggle with the Sanskrit, you know. So please forgive me if I have this big thing in front of me. But um, today, um, our Sutapadas is entering into the renounced uh, order of life, sannyas. Uh, the literal meaning of sannyas is complete renunciation. Actually, all of us are on the path of sannyas in the sense that by the time we die, as Maharaj was saying, we have to give up all our attachments to this world so that we can become fully attached to Krishna. But there comes a point in uh, men's lives in particular where they can accept the formal sannyas, and that's really a, a, a complete sannyas. Some in Sanskrit means complete, and nyasa means renunciation. So it's complete. There's no turning back. <laughs> There's no turning back. When Srila Prabhupada um, gave uh, my godmother Satsarup Maharaj his danda, it was very clear in the microphone. As he handed Satsarup Maharaj his danda, he said, never look back and think you've left anything important behind. And Never envy the position of the materialistic sense enjoyers. This is a dual instruction for sannyasis. And I, having heard that, I kept that in my heart. And I always remember that instruction because we have to be ideal in our character and our practice as sannyasis because we're up front. And uh, people look to the movement. Uh, they judge the leaders by, by the movement. So it's a big responsibility. In Vedic culture, um, a sannyasi is also known as yati. The meaning of yati is yatate mokshaya. It means he who endeavors yatate for liberation. And this order of sannyas, it's existed in our Vedic culture since time immemorial. In fact, I was doing some research and I found that in the Upanishads, uh, it's mentioned sannyas. In the Burihad Aranyaka Upanishad uh, 241, it said, Yagya Valka is speaking to his wife, Maitreyi, about leaving home. She wasn't too happy about it, but he was speaking in that way, which means that there is a sannyas order uh, in our Upanishads, which are from time immemorial. But in my research, I was also seeing that some people uh, say there's no tradition of Tridandi sannyasi in our Gaudiya Vaishnavism. I've come across, sometimes when I preach in universities, there's a student or a professor. There's no sannyasi in your Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. But it's not true. We have examples of um, Sri Gadadhar Pandit. He took a particular type of sannyas called Shetra sannyas uh, in Puri. Shetra sannyas means that one doesn't travel like a Parivatakacharya, but he may still be Paramahamsa. He may be a topmost devotee, but he's chosen to stay in the, in the Kshetra, in that particular area, in a particular dom, for his own bhajan, and perhaps accepting some students. And also one of my great heroes, and maybe one of yours as well, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati, Vindavan Mahi Mamrita. <laughs> he uh, took sannyas in Vrindavan also Shetra Sanyas. Now there's also an argument, just to make things you know, interesting, that uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was not a true sannyasi because he took sannyasi in an unusual way. Usually you take from a living sannyasi. That's how you take sannyas. Uh, but he took sannyas in an unusual way. He took sannyas in front of a photo of his Guru Maharaj. Gorsh Gorsh Das Babaji. That's a well-known fact. So they say, oh, it's not a bona fide sannyas. He took sannyas in front of a, a photo. It's so unusual. But I was thinking such persons, they need to read about the unusual sannyas of Sri Ramanujacharya from the Sri Sampadaya. In the Yati Raja Vaibhava Stotra, 
of Sri Antupurana, I found in verse 50 the history of Sri Ramanujacharya's sannyas. Patnim Purit Yagya Savita Raga Sri Devarajam Pani Patyatasmat Turyasya Raman Sri Krita Van Dadosha Devo Pitasma Yati Varajanama. Speaking about Sri Ramanujacharya. Having given up his wife, he was firmly detached from all attachment. He surrendered himself to Lord Vardhadharaj and accepted the sannyas ashram. The Lord, too, appeared before him and bestowed sannyas and gave him the name Yatiraj, king amongst the sannyasis. So this verse uh, conclusively shows that Ramanujacharya received sannyas from the Lord himself. There's no mention he took the danda from a particular sannyasi. He was initiated by the Lord himself in a non-traditional way. And it's considered by all his followers and us as well as a, a bona fide sannyas. So no one should have any objections to the, uh, you, could, you could say, non-traditional way of sannyas that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati accepted. Someone may say that Ramanuja Acharya, he accepted sannyas from the Lord himself. How can Gorkashore does Babaji compare to the Lord? Well, our answer is that he's the bona fide representative of the Lord. He's the bona fide full representative of the Lord, just like an ambassador to a particular country. He represent, represents that country. If you offend him, you offend the country. If you please him, you please the country. So Sakshad Hari, Gorkashore das Babaji was a bona fide representative and how much of a representative he was? Namo Gora Kisharya Sakshad Vairagya Murtaye Vipalambara Sambudhe Padambujayate Namaha Every time we do the initiation ceremony, this verse comes up and it, I start, whoa! It says, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Gora Kishore Das Babaji, who is renunciation personified. He's always merged in a feeling of separation and intense love for Krishna. So in effect, what was happening there was Bhakti Shananda Saraswati was really reviving the tradition of taking sannyas. In our Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampadaya, before that, renunciation meant Babaji. You put on white and you would sit and you chant 190 times a day. Take a little buttermilk, you know, like, like this, live a very simple austere life in the dawn. But we take sannyas for the purpose of giving up the responsibilities that Maharaj mentioned. <laughs> Household life, he always does something like that. <laughs> and uh, so that we're free to preach, or from the Ramacharya Ashram. But that means because, at least in theory and hopefully in heart, you're, you're finished with material life. You turn your back on material life and you face the sunshine of Krishna's mercy and you take it and you distribute it far and wide. So that was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purpose in taking the uh, saffron cloth. Because in India, even today, even today with all the degradation that's come, the chaos that's come to India, people still respect a person who's in uh, saffron cloth. So many times as I'm traveling around, people come up and they'll offer obeisances, they'll offer flowers, offer, it's, it's still there. So for that reason, the white cloth was changed to the saffron cloth for the renunciation so they could go out and preach Krishna consciousness. And renunciation makes sannyasis good preachers because they're renounced. It's very hard to convince somebody of the futility of material life if you yourself are still somewhat entangled in the futility of material life. <laughs> You have to be renounced so that when you speak about gradual renunciation, which is the general path for the mass of people, the natural way of life, we go through the various ashrams like that, you have to be able to, you have to have experienced that yourself, that the joy of renunciation so that you can give yourself to Krishna. In the Jhabalo Upanishad, paragraph five, I found there's a very interesting conversation between King Janaka and the sage Yagyavalka. Yagyavalka says, Yadahur eva virajat, tanahar eva paravarjat. The moment one feels detached from everything, one is ready for sannyas. May I see a show of hands who's 
um, feeling detached from everything in this world. <laughs> and also our Sutapa, Prabhu. He's ready for that. This is the sign. Yadahar eva virajit, tadahar eva prajit. The moment one feels detached from everything, one's ready for sannyas. And in Srimad Bhagavatam um, 11, 9, 37, there's also a definition of sannyas, a similar but simple phrase. Chiyaka sannyasha uchate. Sannyas is nothing but renunciation. But again, our renunciation means we renounce for an active life of uh, spreading Krishna consciousness. Now, in discussions about renunciation, sometimes the question arises, what exactly are we renouncing? Uh, some philosophers say that we renounce the, the fruit of our acts, and others say we renounce the acts themselves. We become chagis, living with, you know, bark, covering our, our cloth is bark, and we eat the roots from the bottom of the trees. But um, Sri Vira Raghava Acharya, in his commentary uh, to that particular verse, um, he says, Sanyasa karma phala tiyagas, tiyaga uchate natu karma tiyaga. Sanyasa is actually renouncing the fruits of one's acts. It's not renouncing the acts themselves, just like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And in turn, his glorious spiritual son, Sridhar Prabhupada. They could take anything, not something sinful, but anything in this world, utility is the principle, and turn it into preaching, for preaching Krishna consciousness. For example, we see that Bhakti Sanda Saraswati, he rode in motor cars. In those days, you had to go barefoot everywhere as a sannyasi. He entertained in a grand way, you know, important British politicians and different types of people with a table spread of all different types of preparations and silver and glass. And is this sannyas? He wore Western shoes. Why? All for the purpose of impressing the British and getting them engaged in Krishna consciousness. And look around you, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's a sensitive point, as regards uh, sannyas in modern times. Um, I, I saw some comments online that uh, seeing various sannyasis in our movement who have unfortunately left the sannyasa ashram, some devotees like to quote the following words of Sridhar Prabhupada in a room conversation on uh, January 7th, 1977 in Bombay. This should be strictly outlawed. No more sannyasis. And those sannyasis who have fallen, you get them married. Whoa. But this statement, it should be taken according to time, place, and circumstance. For as Maharaj was so nicely describing, if we don't have the sannyas order in our society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, we would be uprooting one of the ashrams in Varnashram Dharma. And since it was Sridhar Prabhupada himself who instructed us to maintain Varashram Dharma in Iskan, we often hear, he once said towards the end, I have not yet fulfilled 50% of my plan establishing Varashram Dharma, civilized society, how you organize. Um, if, if we don't have that Varashram Dharma, uh, this, uh, we, we can't fulfill Sridhar Prabhupada's dream for Krishna consciousness. So, uh, we rather want our sannyasis to always try to uphold the highest ideals um, in Krishna consciousness, and that we see. I don't know, there's so many sannyasis that I think 40 or 50 or 60 or something, and all I'm hearing is wonderful re uh, results of their preaching. Iskan has matured, and our men and ladies have matured, and we're, we're actually becoming what Prabhupada wanted us to be. When he came to the West, he said he wanted to establish a Brahminical order. It wasn't easy in the beginning, but now we see that through the practice and the movement has spread and the infrastructure, we're producing very fine uh, devotees of the Lord. Now, um, I was reading through and everywhere that a sannyasi's life is lonely. 
trying to figure that one out. <laughs> I hardly have any time for it. Only when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning am I looking at myself. It's not like that. But it's, it's there in the Vedic scriptures. That, that is, because traditionally a sannyasi would live alone so that he didn't have to get distracted. I found a verse in the Dakshya Smriti, 735, that a sannyasi should stay alone. Eko bhikshur yato tastu dvachaiva mitunam smritam trayo gramas tatakyatta udvam tu naga rayate. I thought it was a really interesting verse. In actuality, a sannyasi is alone. Two sannyasis are considered as good as a household couple. <laughs> Three become known as a village. <laughs> and four, one, two, three, four, is known as a town. <laughs> Welcome to our Hare Krishna village. <laughs> so there, again, that's time, place, and circumstance. Five will be a city. Five will be a city. All right. Sutapa <laughs> we're going to... However, there's a higher consideration here. And that is our society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We come together under the banner of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishnam Shangupanga Shaparshadam Yagnai Sankatan Prayari Shantihi Shumeda Shaha. We're not meant to be alone in this age. No man is an island unto himself. In spiritual life, in Kali Yuga, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankatan movement, we come together as a congregation and we chant very loudly. Hare Krishna. As Mahaprabhu said, ultimately, we're not brahmacharis, grihastras, vanapasas, sannyasis. We're just the eternal servants, humble servants of the Supreme Lord. So we come together, our identity as part of this great Sankatamu, and we come together and we chant together. Jiva Goswami says, and, uh, Bhakti Sandarva Anucheta 269, Bahubir Milita Kritanam Sankirtanam Iti Uchate. When many devotees get together, then only it is known as Sankirtan. And I remember one time in, in Vrindavan, two of my sannyasi godbrothers, they asked Prabhupada, can we uh, be together? Because we heard we're supposed to be alone. So Prabhupada's answer was, if two sannyasis can accomplish more together, uh, and then by preaching individually, yes. <laughs> One time, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, he said, Induduna Maharaj, you're going to travel with me. He didn't say no to Goswami Maharaj. <laughs> you're going to travel with me. He said, um, I'll give the lectures and you try to be like Vishnu John and you leave the kirtan. <laughs> So in our movement, we have this principle of higher consideration. Traditionally, there's many restrictions in, in the various uh, varnas and ashramas, but uh, there's a higher principle involved so we can make an adjustment. In Hari Bhakti Vilas 5, 453, it says, Ato vachanam param tad vigniyam tattva darshibi. Therefore, whatever is mentioned as forbidden in the scriptures is to be understood mainly to be pertaining to, to non-Vaishnavas. To take this all in proper context. So this verse in Hari Bhakti Vilas is in the context, actually it's referring to sudras or ladies who, uh, uh, about worshipping the Shalagram Shila, because traditionally in Vedic culture, uh, sudras and ladies were not allowed to worship the Shila. However, if they're initiated Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Hari Bhakti Vilas welcomes them, worship the Shalagram Shila. <laughs> <laughs> now one should not think that by adjusting some rules according to time, place, and circumstances, you know, because we have to adjust, you know, we wear Western dress, sannyasis, that never happened before. When I first went to Russia, I had to wear a wig. <laughs> it took me like six hours in the store to find the one I liked. <laughs> and then I put on a three-piece suit to go into Russia. This is 1988, full communist. And I bought a briefcase, and I probably shouldn't say this publicly, but I put in two bottles of gin and some uh, Johnny Walker whiskey. 
such a sinful sin. No, because I, I was convinced that if the KBG caught me, they wouldn't think I was a monk because I had vodka and gin. And... <laughs> so we shouldn't think that by adjusting some rules for the higher purpose that we'll fall into sin. For example, a sannyasi in Vedic culture is not allowed to cross the ocean. That's a no-no because, well, you go to Britain and France and America, it's a Yavana Dash, Malachya Dash. However, we do it because Prabhupada did it. He's the ideal sannyasi. He came to America and preached Krishna consciousness. So because we have this higher consideration. Now Jiva Goswami quotes a verse spoken by Krishna in the Padma Purana. He quotes it in uh, Bhakti Sandarva under Cheta 148. It's really nice. Man nimitam kritam papam api shemaya kalpate mam andritya dharma opi papam syan papa pravataha. Any so called sin committed for my sake, Krishna, is actually religiosity. Whereas any so called religiosity which disrespects and ignores me is sin. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, of course, we hear the story of how. Uh, those perfect Brahmins were following all the rules and regulations of Vanashan Dharma. And when the Gopas came and asked them for rice, they said no. However, the wives of the Brahmanas uh, overstepped the boundaries of their duties and they gave prasad to Krishna and Balaram. By doing something that their husbands had not agreed to, they were overstepping their Vanashram duties. However, we glorify the behavior of those wives of the Brahmins. We don't look down upon them. Because even though they were wives of Brahmanas, they disobeyed their husbands, they did something for Krishna's service. So for us, seva is more important principle than dharma. Actually, seva is our dharma. And even if a sannyasi takes some risk and oversteps the boundaries by wearing a wig and carrying gin, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of it now. <laughs> Shasta says there's no, no harm for him as long as he's maintaining his ashram properly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. And um, there's a verse from the Vishnu Sahasra Nam that I found quoted in Jiva Goswami's commentary on Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu. He has a commentary on Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu. Ma Vasudeva Bhaktanam Ashubham Vidyate Kvachit. There is nothing inauspicious in relationship to the devotees of Lord Vasudev. That's all of you. <laughs> Please give yourself a big round of applause. Your lives are fully auspicious. <laughs> so in conclusion, today, our dear Sitapapu, he's receiving a mantra, a, a sannyas mantra. This mantra is given in the uh, Shamshkara Deepika of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. It's there in black and white. It's not a secret mantra but it's only meant for sannyasis. I will not repeat it here, but it means, um, I offer myself to Gopi Bhavasraya. So who's Gopi Bhavasraya? Who's the sannyasi offering himself to? Well, the meaning of the term Gopi Bhavasraya is Gopi Bhava Ashrayo Yasya, according to our acharyas. He who is sheltered in Gopi Bhav. But it can also mean Gopi Bhav Vasya Ashraya, he who is the shelter of Gopi Bhav. So my conclusion and consulting our GBC Shastri committee <laughs> is that both in both these cases it's referring to Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki. <laughs> Since he's the only person who is most situated for this name, Gopi Bhavaraya. So I understand the mantra as follows. Although you won't hear the mantra, we have the mantra. <laughs> we do have the Hare Krishna mantra, it's enough. <laughs> but today, Sutapa is receiving that mantra, so I'm just concluding with a little talk about it. We understand as sannyasis, the mantra that he will receive today from his illustrious spiritual master, Kadamba Kana Maharaj, is, I offer myself to Goranga, who is the shelter of Gopi Bhav, and who is himself sheltered in Gopi Bhav. So we wish uh, Sutapa Das soon to have another name. All the best in his upholding his sannyas dharma, setting the best example in sannyas, sannyas life. And no doubt, 
Others will become addicted to his lectures as I have been, and he will spread his good fortune all over the world. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> On ceremonies like this, usually I don't prepare myself eloquently, like Indrajumna Swami expressed his beautiful uh, heart to all of us. It was really beautiful. But uh, I speak from the heart. I'm not academic. I'm not a philosopher. I'm not advanced devotee. I'm just a book distributor. I, um, I just want to ask all of you, anyone who loves Sutapa, please raise your hands and say, Big Hari Ball! <laughs> Sutapa Prabhu, this is the blessings that I invoked on your behalf. I tried to put something. Anyway, uh, Sutapa Prabhu is, um, you could say there is a beautiful uh, phenomena called, called adopting, adopting, you know, children. I've adopted Sutapa Prabhu as my own son. Actually, I've got so many godson, they call me a godfather, but... <laughs> Sutapa Prabhu is the senior most one. He's a very good friend with my son, Goranga. My son, Goranga, loves him. Unfortunately, he's working today, but he conveyed his love to you. He's been in our house many times. We like to feed him. And uh, I have to say a few things. I'm not going to quote any Shastra. Today, like Indrajuna Swami said, he doesn't know Sutapa Prabhu, but you hate to write on the nail, but today I know Sutapa Prabhu, so I want to speak a little bit about him. A um, few days ago, usually before I get out of the car to distribute Bhagavad Gita, it's my favorite book, I open the book at random and I see what Lord Krishna is got to tell me. So I, I try to get empowered by the book before. I distributed it. It was about four or five days ago, and I came across on the 18th chapter, 1857. I'm sure you know the verse. Chetasa sarva karmani, mai senyasi matpara, buddhi yogi uprashityam, machita satatambhava. Like Jaidwira Swami said before, and also endorsed by Indrajumna Swami, that Lord Krishna says that in all activities, just depend on me and act always under the, my protection. In this devotional service, be always conscious of me. So, it really struck me. That's what it means, a sannyasi. Um, I remember Sutapa Prabhu coming in my house with a group of brahmachari 20, 25 years ago. I was in the middle of the marathon and they delivered two pallets of Bhagavatam or Gita, I can't remember. And um, at the end, all the brahmachari, they went back in the barn, you know, because they felt the labor. I was very grateful, but he came to me and he said, Vishwambara Prabhu, he was a Bhakta Sandip at that time. Vishwambara Prabhu, please pray for me that I become a sincere book distributor. And um, like you, he said, and I, I felt, you know, I felt that so much sincerity from his heart. Uh, and I never offered him any training. I've trained many devotees distributing books. But Sutapa Prabhu never. You may wonder why. Because you don't empower someone merely by training that person. Technical training, it's not the empowerment. That's material. 
You cannot empower someone by training that person. But the person can empower himself by the humility. And we say that uh, a new broom always sweep, sweeps better, you know, and usually new devotees, they, they do very well. But then as soon as they start to advance positions and then changing dress, you know, they, they feel like Napoleon in the, on, the, on the white horse, you know, then they look down all the other. But Sutapa Prabhu, he was always humble. And uh, there is a say in Italian, uh, those who praise themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be praised. Today is the day that I want to praise you, Sutapa Prabhu, because you never changed in your attitude as a devotee. It's always, every time before the marathon, He's, he's, he's the catalyst person, so many, so many projects and books, very fast. I'm the chairman of the book distribution committee for UK and Europe, and he's the, my, he's the best in our committee. In two minutes, he drafts the schedule for the Sangitan festival. It's usually a big headache. It used to take me days with other devotees but very expert manager. He started the school of bhakti and he passed it on. He wrote many books and he gives the credit to his spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. And uh, he took book distribution of Bhaktivedanta Manor on a very high level and he passed it on. Very, you could see the renunciation of four laws, his devotion. And in Europe, during Brahma Muhurta, he used to ask me, because England, it's actually, UK is the leading the Europe in book distribution. That's a good news for all of you. Sutapa so Prabhu, He developed, he took to heart, you know, a little from a lot. He built a huge army, a little from everyone. So Brahma Muhurta asked me, what is the secret of success for UK? Because we give huge BBT remittance every year. And I, I very proudly, I would say, I have a special, special secret. Uh, I have uh, this devotee called Sutapa. <laughs> and, <laughs> the manor is the, uh, the greatest muscle for book distribution for Europe. And not only that, I was very proud to tell the committee on the ELM meetings, and he's my boy, Sutapa. <laughs> He's uh, such a wonderful devotee, and uh, he's actually not by chance from a great lineage. He's got his grand spiritual master. For me, he's my hero, Jaidwita Swami. He's like the Bhishma Deva of Iskon. <laughs> Bhishma Deva, you know, gave up everything. No kingdom, no kingship, no women, no married life. But he... He did his duty to serve Astinapur. And Jayadweda Swami, he serves Iskon and Srila Prabhupada uh, very, in a very renowned, he's actually the embodiment of renunciation. Uh, Lord Chaitanya said, Najanam, Nadanam, Nasundarim, no women, no money, give up these things, and no followers, even at the position of a guru. He he's not he's never sick for followers, but he's very smart, Jaidwira Swami. He made one disciple amongst the few of them that he's making thousands of disciples all over the world. <laughs> Kadambakanana Swami. <laughs> and that's 
Like Srila Gorkishore Babaji Maharaj, he didn't want any followers, but he met one disciple, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, that on his behalf, so he's doing so much preaching, Jaidweda Swami, without preaching. <laughs> anyway, today you're very fortunate. <laughs> you have the presence of Indrajivana Swami, who is just by his presence, you know, he makes devotees. <laughs> what to speak about when he starts to sing or speak. So we are very fortunate, all of you, all of us, that uh, we are in this family. Please give your blessings today to Sutapa Prabhu because he's a, he's a special devotee. Um, from my heart, I wanted to be here today. I usually go out on Sangitan on Sunday. It's my best day of the week. But today I got a phone call and they invited me to speak and I said, yes, I have to be there. And uh, I wish you, he's, uh, he's got so much love in his heart, in his chest. Not just for the devotees, not just, but also for the conditioned souls. There is a say, you know, if you, uh, to, 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 uh, to serve people, you have to love people. So he serves what he loves. Of course, he's understood, you know, you don't see Krishna at the moment, but you see the devotees, you see the conditioned souls. So if you don't learn to love what you see, you can never learn to love what you don't see. So that's Sutapa Prabhu, he's, he's a, a lover of the devotees, a lover, he's got fine taste for book distribution, Every marathon, even now, he's so, he's changing his eyes as sannyasi, more advanced than me, but still he phones me up, Vishwambar Prabhu, I am with my team in Manchester, and uh, please give us your blessings that we can survive this marathon. The humility is still there. Uh, all of us is a, is a lesson for me. No matter how advanced we become, no matter what ashram we are in, we should never forget the uh, blessings and the respect for the for the authorities and for the uh, for our spiritual masters. So thank you very much, and uh, I will pass the floor to someone else. Hare Krishna. I do many weddings and no one shows up. <laughs> and now I heard there's a wedding. A man will be wedded to God and, and a stick. And a thousand people turn up. <laughs> Sutapa. I've always wanted to do this. Hello, Wembley. <laughs> Thank you. Always been a desire of mine. So the village of uh, Wembley, they say it takes a village to raise a child. It certainly takes a village to raise a sannyasi. Just as in our hearts, there's a little bit of Sutapa through his smile, his books, his speaking, his kirtan, his gentle guidance over the years. I think it's fair to say, everyone, there's a little bit of each of us in Sutapa. Sutapa knows that he would not have reached this place without our encouragement, guidance, friendship, and today, especially, our blessings. So we raise our right hand and we gesture towards Sutapa Prabhu and we say, Om, Om. Sutapa. Prabhu, Prabhu. Mangalani. Mangalani, Bhavantu. Bhavantu. So now having declared that there's a little bit of us in you, you owe us. <laughs> we own you. There's a bit of a problem. Britain has created 12 sannyasis. 12 sannyasis 
have graced the soil of the British Yatra. And what have we done? We've exported every single one of them. <laughs> We've given them away. You might say, Sonyas is a very good British export. <laughs> That's left us with a problem. We don't have one sannyasi who is regularly, always, in the United Kingdom. And I would like to humbly suggest that all of us now, please ask Sutapa, don't leave us. Please, stay with us. Wherever you go, come back home. What is sannyas? Ramanujacharya asked his disciple Yadava Prakash to write a book, a handbook on sannyas. He produced the Yati Dharma Samuchaya. A thousand years ago is a handbook on how to practice sannyas. Much of it is to help a man who has spent all his life in householder life to give up, to detach, to renounce to stay free from homes, money, followers, and clothing, and comfortable food. This is what you will find in that book. Well, when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta reinstigated the sannyas order for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, he made a distinction. He said that any sannyas that is not for Krishna is falgu. Follow means fruit. And gu means no. So fruitless. I have a nice garland on. It's got roses. Anybody eaten a rose fruit? You know how delicious a rose fruit is? How sweet, how juicy, how tasty? No, you don't. Because there's no such thing. <laughs> a rose looks very nice. But it doesn't produce fruit. Similarly, tiaga or vairagya, which is not dedicated to Krishna, the Supreme Person, produces no fruit. Therefore it is falgu rayagya. Rupa Goswami has decided to illuminate us by saying that the real term is yukta vairagya, or appropriate renunciation. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur wrote a magazine, the Nadia Prakash. Every day, it will be published. And on its masthead, just like the Back to Godhead magazine had a masthead, God had his light, nescience his darkness. And he wrote a modern Bengali version of Rupa Goswami's Falgu Vairagya verse. And it went everywhere. Because he wanted to show that proper renunciation is that if something can be used in Krishna's service, it should be. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has all said, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. But when someone takes sannyas in our movement, he often initiates. Srila Prabhupada was, he took sannyas and then went on a preaching tour to Kanpur, Agra, and Bharatpur and different places. At the end of his very excellent class, someone came forward and said, Swamiji, will you initiate us? He said, oh yes, and the head of the Mutt, the Maharaj who had given Srila Prabhupada Sanyas said, he said, oh, at the moment, Swamiji, I am initiating. And Prabhupada said, oh, you've got me married, now I cannot have any children. In other words, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, no followers, no wealth, no money. Huh? But at the same time, a sannyasi in ISKCON receives many followers, much wealth. Uh, many people are attracted to him. So I just want to caution you that a sannyasi is not a brahmachari. If you go up to, San, if you go to Sutapa after the ceremony has concluded and you slap him on the back, that is a breach of mariyad. Mariyad means the new rules that he will be following. If you give him your baby in order to take a, a cute picture, that is a breach of his mariyad. At the same time, as having an interest in his future life, we also should be 
protecting him, helping him, keeping him strong. And he will appreciate that. And the love between us as Grihastas and those about to become Grihastas and the Sannyas order will be preserved very nicely. In conclusion, I just want to read something that Prabhupada has said about Sannyas. He said, uh, he was in Vrindavan and he said, uh, Sannyasi should go on preaching, 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 preaching. <laughs> Getting this? <laughs> Practically, I was sitting here in Vrindavan in Radha Damodar temple. So at the age of 70 years, nobody goes out, at least from Vrindavan, nobody goes out at the age of 70 years. But Krishna asked me, I thought that I must go. Guru Maharaj wanted it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, let me try. So if I had not gone, this institution would not have developed. So this is practical. Mahata nirvicharanam. Mahatma, they must move. So when there is absolute necessity, they may stay. Otherwise, they must move. Move on, move on, move on, move on. No staying, that is the principle. Mm. And it means the sannyasis must travel. Because Prabhupada here does not say that they have to travel internationally. <laughs> Taking sannyas in Iskon does not mean that you have to go and preach in Zimbabwe. It's a nice country, but Britain is also a nice country. In conclusion, I conclude by offering my pranams to Sutapa. Thank you for enlivening us all over many years with your erudite classes, your enthusiasm, your wit, and your strong, your strong preaching. Ramanujacharya said there's only two things that should be white on a sannyasi. He said one is his Brahmin thread and the other is his teeth. <laughs> Sutapa's smile has captured many hearts, as has his steady stream of well-written and illustrated books, isn't it? He's given himself to others. Sutapa Prabhu, you've been a powerful presence here in this yatra, and we we're all very happy to be here this morning witnessing this next stage of your life. Please continue to guide us into the next stage of ours. May Lord Krishna guide you always. Hare Krishna. First of all, um, offer my obeisances to my spiritual masters, my initiating spiritual master, who is, has kindly come and, and is grazing this occasion and has, um, has preached very powerfully in so many ways. And, and particularly established Siddhanta everywhere and has reminded us of the true duties in life. His words pierced my heart and, and reinforced my and improved my the little bit of dedication I somehow or other got by Devotees Association to Srila Prabhupada's mission and service. He has greatly reinforced that in me and kindly given me sannyas and showered me with endless blessings. That's the only reason that I'm sitting here today. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I, I would be just an ordinary man. Um, in the Jumna Maharaj, I've never understood why he's been so kind to me all these years. <laughs> uh, it's been amazing because Maharaj has such a generous heart that it is just incredible how much he can give from him more than anything, uh, I, I learned about giving 
real Vaishnav generosity, giving yourself, giving your heart, giving your everything, and then give a little more. <laughs> and Maharaj does that with so much expertise and so much charm, and he can charm anyone. <laughs> I've seen it many times. <laughs> I've seen him charm the mayor of Durban. Mr. Mayor, I wanted to make this festival a great success. I wanted to make a festival where all communities could be present, but I failed. No, 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 Mr. Swami. No, 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 please. It's very difficult. No, no. Next year, the city will pay for the entire festival. I go, <laughs> how did he do it? <laughs> it's just inconceivable. So we all know about the miracles of Indra Jumna Maharaj because he writes about them. <laughs> I won't make any further comments about that. <laughs> Uh, and Dayananda Maharaj, yes, has been here um, for many years in the UK, has, um, has preached to the devotees, um, to the community, uh, so many um, people who need inspiration. And, and Diana and Maharaj has long-standing relationships in the UK. So I think he's one of the sannyasis who hasn't left the UK. I think he's still here, sometimes traveling, but very much here with deep roots that will never go away. So, Vande Gurun, I offer my obeisances to all my spiritual masters. There are many, and of course, the spiritual master of all of us, Srila Prabhupada. Um, on this day, um, clearly, um, I am um, speaking here as Sutapa's spiritual master. Um, the previous speakers have uh, have defined what sannyas is is really meant to be. Um, we have heard how it is part of the Vedic Varna Ashram. We have heard um, that Anasrita, a uh, karma falam, has been a Bhagavad Gita verse six one has been quoted three times. Right? Maybe four. I think even in the Jumna March quoted it at one point. So I think all um, uh, clearly offering the fruits of our activities um, to the service of the supreme of the supreme Lord, the mission of the spiritual master. Um, so I will not repeat, I will not go there. Um, um, and the Jumna Maharaj did a level of research which was uh, very impressive. Uh, not only was it like a lot of, of substantial verse after verse, and it was just, uh, Maharaj became in the last few years a real researcher. Yeah? I mean, during COVID time, he focused on Vindal and started to research, and, and now he just shone that same light on this sannyas. You know, like, phew, where did he get all that? <laughs> when did he do all that? Where did he find the time to research all this? And brought us many wonderful verses. I think Sutapa should ask Maharaj to give him those quotes. I mean, that's something. Uh, <laughs> and I'll take him from you as well. <laughs> um, yes. Um, we can. Sp 
I, want, I started with a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Vande Garun Isa Bhaktam Isam Isa Avatar Kam. Um, because um, I wanted to particularly look at, at sannyas from that perspective, from the perspective of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his, and his mission. Um, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, although rooted in Vedic culture, at times is transcendental to Vedic culture. And uh, the sannyas is uh, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself showed by example, uh, certainly embraces the Vedic principles of being very renounced and very detached. He would sleep just on the ground, right? We remember past times where Jagadananda Pandit wanted to offer more comfort and he was not ready um, to accept. And many other examples of his uh, very extraordinary example of renunciation. Nonetheless, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sanyas was clearly not based on, uh, on renunciation. Um, his sannyas was based on, uh, on something much deeper. When we see the description of the sannyas ceremony of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see that uh, when, when he received the name and the danda, that at that point, all the love of God that had been bottled up for all that time within his heart just burst. And uh, yeah, everyone was looking, such a handsome young man taking sannyas. Oh, the ladies were thinking, he is real ma good marriage material. <laughs> I thought I'd bring that up because some may think our sutapa is also real good marriage material. <laughs> He's tall, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's handsome, has all these good qualities uh, on the material plane, which are an austerity for a sannyasi. <laughs> Better be ugly. <laughs> As I said, I thought about it, how shall I speak? And I thought I should speak as a spiritual master in the sense of Sutapa's spiritual master and also speak in, in his interest. Kripa Mai Prabhu brought something up about protection. Yes, ladies, my humble request is <laughs> keep a respectful distance, please. Give him some some space to, I know he's very inspiring, but at a distance. Um, give him the chance to grow, to survive, and to, um, and to lead um, this yatra and many devotees um, to uh, greater heights in their devotional service. Although we've heard his good qualities, and I'm the first to recognize um, his, his strengths, in this age of Kali, no one is strong. Uh, everyone is, is fundamentally weak. Uh, otherwise, what are we doing in this age? Right? Therefore, Considering that, um, our, our true protection um, likes, 
lies in taking, taking shelter. Mm. Srila Prabhupada, as our founder Acharya, as our living example of pure love of God, of prema bhakti, as the true representative of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, um, as the external manifestation of the super soul. Um, Srila Prabhupada is the very strength of this movement. Um, therefore, um, I pray that Sutta Prabhu may always be known as a, as a real Prabhupada man. Um, that's something. I got a little bit of that mood in Vrindavan where Srila Prabhupada is so present. I somehow or other joined in the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. And so in, the, in my first few days in Krishna consciousness, everything was Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Wherever you look, there was Krishna. But after a while, I began to see in this temple, Srila Prabhupada is even more present than Krishna. And I could see this is truly uh, the very essence of this movement. Mm. And this grew deeper in my heart. And I thought of myself, well, I'm a Prabhupada man. When I made the formal connection with my spiritual master, um, Srila Jayadveta Swami Maharaj, then I realized I'm not a Prabhupada man at all. <laughs> and uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> Uh, at his lotus feet. Mm. But I, I let this Sampradaya continue. Let us be Prabhupada man. That would be uh, Sanyas Adanda is it's like an amplifier. Right? It's like you carry this danda and suddenly whatever you are becomes amplified. And suddenly everyone listens to what you say. Before, no one ever listened. <laughs> suddenly, maybe some listened, but now suddenly so many more. Your, your words will be recorded. They will be played by, the, by those to those who have not even taken birth yet. Right? It goes that far. Every so, my spiritual master uh, taught me that uh, he says before he speaks, he says, "I'm trying to say something bona fide." Okay. So that's that's something. Try to say something bona fide. Um, these are some thoughts that come to my mind on on this day. Um, uh, of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas. Uh, uh, we could see from the from the Chaitanya Charitamrita where uh, Nimai Pandit was being disrespected by proud Brahmana boys, and where he felt that his uh, that what to do now? How can I deliver them? Uh, and he thought, yes, they still have some respect for the sannyas ashram. So he took sannyas and he even took Ekadanda sannyas because socially that was the, expect, the, the respected uh, type of sannyas at the time. Um, although he clearly established Krishna Matiras too, that Krishna uh, was, was the, that he was a Vaishnava sannyasi, that Krishna was his goal. 
Um, so it's been established that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas for the purpose of preaching. In the Chaitanya Mangal, there is a little bit of another uh, narrative where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got up, Vishwambar, got up in the middle of the night from bed. And as he went for the door, his mother was blocking the door. And as his mother was blocking the door, she said, you're going to take sannyas. He didn't deny it. Then an argument unfolded. She gave many, many reasons. Why not? And it became a huge debate. Then in conclusion, he said, mother, mother, is it true? Is it true that a son should go out in the world, make a fortune and bring it back to his parents? She said, yes, that is true. He said, then I must go out into the world and make the fortune of love of God. And then I'll return and bring it back to you. Then she didn't know what to say anymore. And she stood there and he slipped past her. And that's how he managed to leave. So it's, it's true. These dual purposes are there. Um, just preaching for the sake of preaching, just propaganda is, is good. Uh, let's have more propaganda about Krishna consciousness. But um, we see Srila Prabhupada, um, who deeply, deeply uh, realized every word that he preached. Uh, not only were was he faithful, very faithful, in repeating scripture. It's, I find it amazing sometimes to see the examples Srila Prabhupada uses right, from scripture, considering that he was a householder for so many years, business, then you think, well, did he have time to read? Right? Clearly he did, uh, because you cannot at the end of your life read and then give lectures that are so close to the, to the Bhagavatam, that's just so faithful using the example of the Bhagavatam. So uh, in that way, Srila Prabhupada clearly is the uh, very faithful representative of the scriptures of the previous Acharyas. Um, but then, he realized every word of what he preached. And it's just all there in his heart. And that kept him uh, very, very deep. Uh, we also see that although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu followed the rules of Varna Ashram strictly, we also see that uh, the verse Naham Vipra Natyanara Patiya Napi Vaishana Sudra Naham Vani Natsakriya Patiya Nova Nastiyatir Va Kintu Proja Nakila Paramanam Ritabdir uh Gopi Bhartapada Kamalaya Dasana Dasana Das that he is also going on that other level of pure unalloyed devotional service. Uh, so sannyas is certainly also for that, itam sastaya paratmanistam paratmanistam. It begins with this nista, this nista. That's the the minimum requirement, right? This firm determination must be there. Otherwise, firm determination to make whatever Krishna desires what the priority, right? not my personal desires, not what Krishna desires, the priority. Hmm. But Nista is still thin ice, very thin. It's a, a very thin foundation. To take sannyas on Nista alone is lonely. Sannyasi goes alone, but when his when the foundation of his spiritual life is very thin. Uh, then these vows become very narrow. Then the vows become 
heavy. Um, therefore, that nista position is not good enough. One has to go further. One has to, yes, then we hear about ruchi and we hear about taste. We hear about ashakti, we hear about deep attachment and all that. Now, again, I lived somehow or other by Krishna's grace a long time in Vrindavan. So, the topics of Raganuga Bhakti are daily discussions in Vrindavan. This is between, you know, be, in breakfast, between bites, uh, a regular everyday thing. Uh, Raganuga, uh, the, the, the love of the gopis. You hear about it every, in every corridor. It's just uh, whatever they talk about. Vrindavan, Vrindavan, Vrajabhumi. And yeah, but who are we to go there? Very difficult, very difficult very hard to actually really go there to the level of spontaneous attraction to Krishna. Mm. Sannyas out of duty, that is a precarious position. Um. However, when we preach, when we selflessly preach Krishna consciousness, uh, then um, the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is upon us. Srila um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his Anubhasya on the Chaitanya Charitamrita is explaining that we should not worship Krishna to the exclusion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and that we should not worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the exclusion of, of Krishna. We turn to Sankirtan. We turn to widely sharing the mercy. We try as much as we can to be an instrument of the mercy of the Lord, the previous Acharyas. And we widely try to distribute this knowledge. One new sannyasi asked Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, how to keep your balance in the sannyas ashram? Maharaj replied, said, you're asking the most unbalanced, per unbalanced person. He said, but I have only, only one thought. I try to touch as many hearts as I can. Uh, then Krishna takes care of the base. Yes. So let us somehow or other get absorbed in this in this preaching vigorously, according to truthfully and honestly, according to the level that we have attained. And it is through that preaching that we will wind up gaining more than we had before, as Chaitanya Charitamrita mentions. And, and then we can take that back to Krishna. And then gradually we will grow and our taste will awaken. Uh, I'm seeing that in the association of the exalted um, sannyasis that we are with today. Um, so, this is our, our meditation. Um, I was thinking furthermore today um, about the uh, about the Bhagavatam, and I was thinking about the third canto. And in the third canto of Bhagavatam, we have the beginning of the creation. And there is Lord Brahma, and he has created uh, various sons from his mind, sages that are uh, beginning to populate an empty universe. But uh, somehow or other, 
the population was not really increasing. So Lord Brahma uh, was wondering how to carry on his mission. And um, then from his body, two forms manifested. Oh. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada describes one form had a mustache and the other one had swollen breasts. And this, it said, this male and female form then just, then united in sexual, uh, in a sexual union. Well, that's the history of the universe, right? Sexuality. It's something that is very, very strong. It governs all the species. Uh, it's in all the species, the sex desire is there. The sannyasi is a, unlike a brahmachari who kept somehow or other a vow of celibacy um, and kept a humble position, kept him, yes, preached, but at the same time stayed simple. Sannyas is not like that. Uh, sannyas. Sannyas means now we have to use everything we have. Everything for Krishna. Engage everything. Uh, um, and take the limelight and lead others towards Krishna. So it's a huge change. And with it, we become also a target for Maya. So we are careful to take the humble position, first of all, and to take shelter of the proper disciplines of the Vaishnavas, the senior Vaishnavas. Um, and continue to look for blessings, yes. And yet, well, the world is on fire and we have a huge um, sansara, davana, the loka. People are suffering. We have to, have to work very hard to relieve that suffering. So Kripamai requested that Sutapa would stay in the in the UK, <laughs> I think he needs a little space to breathe. Also, <laughs> after all, Sachinanda Maharaj once said that Great Britain has actually become Small Britain. Now it's just an island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a was a sensitive one, but I'm Dutch, so I agree. <laughs> That's two against one. <laughs> yes, so um, I fully agree that this island is a little small to be all the time. I think it's natural that one travels and preaches and and refreshes and a sannyasi cannot get too entangled in all the local uh, relationships sometimes needs to step out and explore new horizons and bring and bring a freshness to the UK that's very needed right because tradition is good Um, I'm talking too long <laughs> and um, yeah but it says that in religious traditions there are two types of leaders the prophet and the priest both are necessary the priest is upholding the values of the tradition and the prophet is renewing the tradition. So, 
I like prophets better. <laughs> uh, more exciting. But both are needed. So, uh, but certainly, um, I think that Krishna has destined Sutta Prabhu to play a leading role in the UK for for a lifetime. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but not just the UK. I think in this in this movement also in the entire Hare Krishna movement and and, and natural places of service will open up over time. Um, I think so. Let all the senior men uh, support him, right? Who's taking this courageous step? Let all the uh, let all uh, all the others uh, assist him in his mission, uh, and in this way, uh, let us bundle all the energy in the UK to fully fulfill the potential of this yatra. The UK has a duty, a duty to the world. The Bhaktivedanta Manor is an arrangement of Krishna. Um, this, came, this project came to Srila Prabhupada. It's a very powerful uh, facility with a powerful congregation. Let from here, uh, the whole world, benefit and let Sutipa be the conduit for that mission. Right. And uh, yes. And the Jumna March went from the uh, Vedic system to sannyas to even the most intimate aspects of sannyas to uh, to uh, really try and develop that unalloyed mood of service, that unalloyed service attitude of the gopis uh, who served Krishna out of full love. So, yeah, so may love grow and be the driving force. Srila Prabhupada in the in, in an explanation to the verse Aham Savashya Prabhavo Mata Savam Bhavartate Iti Mata Bhajantamam Buddha Bhava Saman Vitaha is saying Krishna is the origin of everything spiritual and material. Then he says that, um, yes, he says, if you, love the, if you love the body, then you will automatically also love finger, right? So, in the same way, if you love Krishna, you will also love Krishna's creation. Therefore, uh, Buddha Bhava Samanvita, to worship with love, is not merely to worship Krishna with love, but to, uh, to really share that love with all living entities, for all living entities. And it's that. That understanding of love of God, reaching up to Krishna and then coming back down with that same love to the people, that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is Srila Prabhupada, and that is where sannyas will be successful. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>
to base sannyas on austerity is, is not uh, speaking to my heart. Nor I think that that will be the ideal name for, for, for your preaching mission. So I have uh, meditated and meditated and um, there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of pressure to come up with a, with a, with a good name, you know. I was, <laughs> I was talking to Burijan and Burijan said, yeah, you, you have to give him a very powerful name. I go, oh my God. <laughs> how am I going to do that, you know? And it's puzzling and this and that. Anyway, I think I found something. By Krishna's grace, that's all I can say. So, with, with, with great pleasure, I'm offering you this, this danda. And from this day on, you will be known as Swayam Bhagavan Kesav Maharaj. <laughs> His Holiness Swayam Bhagawan Keshava Maharaj Ki. I think Kesav sounds better than Kesava in terms of syllables. Swayam Bhagawan Keshav Maharaj. He can write Keshava, but Keshav. I think so. Swayam Bhagawan Keshav Maharaj. Case of Maharaj, when you want to make it short. <laughs> yeah. um, my blessings, yes, and may you, uh, yeah, um, Yaradika Tarakaha, Krishna Upadesh, whomever you meet. Uh, May you tell them about Krishna, the instructions of Krishna, and may you establish uh, Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead widely all over the world. Yeah. Maybe take the blessings on that side. said everything. Let's go forward. Hare Krishna. <laughs> like <laughs> I remember remembering how um, some devotees related to me that um, Shri Prabhupada was giving a darshan and suddenly uh, Jayananda Prabhu walked in. I think it was after Rathiyatra and he stayed behind and helped cleaned up and put the card away and so forth and he 
walked into the um, to the darshan in his saffron cloth, and Prabhupada looked at him and said, "He looks just like Lord Chaitanya." <laughs> so when you were coming down the way here, I thought I said to to Amaraj, "He looks just like Lord Chaitanya." <laughs> <laughs> As one of us was pointing out, um, Mahaprabhu was young when he took sannyas, 24, and he was very handsome, being the supreme personality of Godhead. And uh, you have some of the sa same features and uh, the same spirit, which is most important of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So may he bless you to uh, continue his mission here in the UK and other places as well. <laughs> <laughs> and spread the holy names all over the UK and a few towns and villages around the world as well. <laughs> Bhagavan Keshava Maharaj Ke! Gaurav Premanandi! So I think, you know, Suvtapar, I've known him for 20 years and um, He's self-sufficient from the very beginning, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but I think, you know, Sanya's life, it's a, a life of renunciation, but it needs balance. And um, I think everybody has their uh, strengths and weaknesses. And therefore, you know, everybody's um, <clears throat> austerity and everybody's um, uh, relaxation time is different, so um, I think that providing Maharaj, he actually balances his time and uh, keeps himself strong in Krishna consciousness, that's the main thing. And, um, you know, Sud um, Bhagavan Kesha Maharaj is very attached to book distribution, so um, I think he'll be still spending a large amount of his time doing that. So we have to actually uh, feed ourselves as well as give to others. So uh, I look forward to seeing uh, Keshav Maharaj in his new outfit around England. <laughs> Hare Krishna. One devotee, he saw this, uh, he was looking at the danda, and he said, um, Sutapa, you're really jumping in the deep end of the swimming pool. He said, but you won't have any problem drowning because your danda is so long <laughs> that you'll always be able to pull yourself out. And when he said that, it reminded me of the verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, Durga me pati me inthasya skalat pada gater muhu svakripa yastidane na shanta shantva balambanam. He says, My path is very uh, difficult and I'm slipping again and again, but the stick of the mercy of the Vaishnavas is holding me up. When the thought of this sannyas ceremony came, then I said to my spiritual master that perhaps we can do it in some secluded uh, corner of Vrindavan, maybe at the foot of Govardhan Hill under a tree. And he said, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. <laughs> so somehow or other it worked out in a different way. But I'm very grateful because so many Vaishnavas came and so many Vaishnavas give blessings and that's the stick of the mercy that holds us up. So many sadhus came today. In the Bhagavatam it's mentioned, Shanta eva syachindanti mano vyasanga mukti bi that the words of a sadhu are like razor sharp and they can cut the attachments within the mind of the conditioned soul. So His Holiness Jayadvaita Maharaj for me is the personification of that verse. His words are so powerful, His words are so 
chase to Srila Prabhupada. And so today he's blessed us by his presence and I pray that in my life, my words will also represent Srila Prabhupada as strongly as uh, he embodies in his life. His Holiness Indra Dhumna Maharaj is here. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is talking about divine qualities and he says, Abhayam Sattva Sam Sudhir Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti Krishna begins the list of divine qualities by talking about abhayam or fearlessness. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada says, fearlessness is the first quality of a sannyasi. And His Holiness Indra Dhuna Maharaj is so much the embodiment of that, ready to go anywhere, ready to do anything, ready to uh, take on any risk to share Krishna consciousness in the most... Uh, difficult and hostile environments. So I pray, Marge, that I can grab some of your, an, an ounce of your fearlessness in Srila Prabhupada's service. We were so fortunate in the manner to have an example as Dayananda Marge from day one. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he says, Saralata e Vaishnavatva Simplicity is Vaishnavism. And His Holiness Dayananda Maharaj is such a simple, humble soul. And from day one, we were uh, exposed to that beautiful example. And uh, we owe so much to him as well. So many of Srila Prabhupada's disciples have come today. And living at the manor, is such a boon because we have the association of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Recently I was thinking that we love Prabhupada, but we only know of Prabhupada because of his disciples. Because his disciples write, wrote biographies, wrote their experiences of Srila Prabhupada, we know about Prabhupada. Because his disciples took pictures and recorded Srila Prabhupada's words, we can hear Prabhupada. Because Srila Prabhupada's disciples sacrificed everything, their youth, all comfort, to build Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON. Therefore, we know Prabhupada. So, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, I feel, are the biggest gift of Srila Prabhupada um, to us in this world. Kripa Moya Prabhu spoke. Recently I finished reading Kripa Moya Prabhu's biography. And it's incredible, just a decade after decade of service to Srila Prabhupada, unrelenting, ever increasing. Such an amazing example. The disciples of Srila Prabhupada had uh, no hesitation in doing whatever it took to spread Srila Prabhupada's movement. So they are here today and I pray that I can um, serve them and continue that legacy in some small way. I guess I should also thank my parents. <laughs> Sounds like an Oscar speech, no? <laughs> uh, my parents made a big sacrifice. I left home when I was 21, and I said I'd be back after six months. <laughs> I even had to sign a contract. <laughs> but I hope that if there's anything good that I've done, that I will do, that the benefit will go to them, because they made a sacrifice. I have to thank my spiritual master When Tamar Krishna Maharaj was told by Srila Prabhupada to go to India, he didn't want to go. Prabhupada said, why not? He said, because Indians are too tricky. <laughs> Prabhupada said, but I'm an Indian. He said, no, no, not you, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, no, no, actually, I am also tricky. <laughs> because I tricked you into becoming Krishna conscious. 
So, uh, with the greatest of respect, I can also say that my own spiritual master is very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> He's very generous. No more Mahavadanyaya, this is Mahaprabhu, is so much magnanimity, so much generosity. I observe my spiritual master day in, day out, he's uh, addicted to giving the mercy to others. And he had a plan to make something useful out of my life. I wasn't aware of the plan. Slowly it unfolds. But that is his great generosity to give me an opportunity to make my life successful and do something worthwhile for Srila Prabhupada. Carrying, he's carrying the spirit of Mahaprabhu in such a powerful way. I hope I'll uh, fulfill his desires and his vision. On this day, Shri Dharma Prabhu is not here. Maybe he is. I don't know. <laughs> but he gave me a lot of mercy. And actually, he was the greatest sannyasi. Yeah. He was a real sadhu, real saintly person. He used to tell me, life is short. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. Have a laugh, a smile, and do something for Prabhupada. You'll look back, you'll feel very, very happy. And you know, things happen in life, but don't take the illusion too seriously. Shridharma Prabhu was someone who really walked with the vision of eternity. He was a real saintly person and he instilled that, some of that, I hope, in me. So today is a, a kind of journey into the unknown. Um, but then I was thinking, Srila Prabhupada's whole life was a journey into the unknown. When Srila Prabhupada was a householder, then in the late 50s, he decided to give it all up, go to Vrindavan, take sannyas and live as a mendicant. That was a journey into the unknown. Then in Vrindavan, Prabhupada got the opportunity to go to America to preach Krishna consciousness, bigger opportunities. A journey into the unknown. Prabhupada came to Butler, Pennsylvania. But then he thought, I can't start the movement here. I have to go to the center. So Prabhupada decided to leave that quiet neighborhood and go to New York City. A journey into the unknown. In New York City, Prabhupada was in upstate New York at Dr. Mishra's apartment. But he thought, these are not the people. So he thought, let me descend to the Lower East Side, the Skid Row, the lowest of the low, and preach Krishna consciousness there. So he left and he went to the Bowery, a journey into the unknown. And from there, Prabhupada was just making every single journey around the world into the unknown. So for me, it's a very small journey into the unknown compared to Srila Prabhupada. But I hope in this journey into the unknown, I hope to meet Srila Prabhupada and Krishna along the way on this journey. Serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is the, uh, the best job in the world. And Prabodhananda Saraswati says, Yatha Yatha Gauda Padada Vinde, that when you dive into the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then as you go into that deep ocean of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, eventually you'll navigate to the shores of Radha and Krishna's Vrajalila. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Adhyapiha She Lila Kaha Gauda Roy. Kona kona bhagyavan deki bharapoy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes are going on even today. 
Kona kona bhagyavan, but who's that fortunate person that will able to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes? So I'm a, a small soul uh, with a big danda. <laughs> but I want to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And uh, I'm praying that all of you help me to become fortunate so that I can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. As I look out, I see so many of you and actually you all helped me in spiritual life. You gave me so much mercy. You gave me so many opportunities to serve. Um, as Kripa Moya Prabhu says, it takes a whole village to bring up a child. So um, I'm made of your mercy. I'm at your service. Um, in the UK. <laughs> and, <laughs> and maybe a few other places. Also, uh, if, if it's allowed. With Kripa Mahaprabhu's blessings, of course. <laughs> and I hope I'll do something of value in this life and um, honor the sannyasa ashram and uh, make it fruitful by uh, sharing Krishna consciousness and fulfilling Srila Prabhupada's uh, deepest desire that as many people in this world get the opportunity to uh, make their lives perfect. I hope to be some kind of a small instrument in that plan. And um, please uh, pray for me that I um, become humble and stay humble um, pride cometh before the fall, so please correct me and please uh, advise me, guide me, and uh, uh, please let me know if there is uh, something I'm doing wrong. And uh, in this way, I uh, hope to be uh, your servant. Um, for the rest of this uh, life and beyond. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki. His Holiness, Swayam Bhagwan, Keshav Swami Maharaj Ki.